Hello, my name is Kelsey, and welcome to our second annual Annapurna Interactive Showcase. We had the best time sharing all of our latest gains and partnerships with you last summer, so this year we're back again to show you what we have in store for 2022 and beyond. Today we'll have about 25 minutes of new reveals, closer looks at games you've seen before, and spotlights on a few developers we are thrilled to be working with. We want to thank our fans and partners all over the world for making this showcase possible. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Chandana Ekanayaka. And I'm Meghna Jayan. Welcome to the joyful and surreal world of Thirsty Suitors. Thirsty Suitors is an action-adventure RPG about fighting your exes, disappointing your parents, and finding yourself. This is Jala. She's back in her hometown of Timber Hills after a brutal breakup and has to face everything she left behind. Her immigrant parents' tattered expectations, claustrophobic small-town gossip. Did you love me, Jala? And the string of messily broken hearts she left in her wake. The player shapes Jala's story through narrative choices woven through skating, cooking with her parents, and fantastical turn-based combat with her thirsty ex-suitors. Each suitor battle is a battle with the past, as Jala is confronted with her ex's perspective of a narrative she thought she knew. Let's look at how combat and narrative work together during the battle with Jala's third grade boyfriend, Sergio. Jala's base attack does damage and builds up her willpower. Taunts reveal your opponent's weaknesses by putting them in a mood. My mom says I'm irresistible, and my mom is always right. So let's hit him with a thirsty taunt. Now Sergio is in a thirsty mood. His attacks do less damage and have a chance to backfire. When he's in this mood, Jala's thirst skill does way more damage. In between their attacks and deflections, the player shapes Jala's personality and backstory through choices, which build up her persona. Just when Jala thinks she's getting through to Sergio, he pulls her into his inner world, a psychic landscape where he's the man he imagines himself to be in reality. What the hell? I can't make a dent! Sergio's ego makes him invulnerable to attack. What's a girl to do? Like most South Asian men, all it takes to destroy Sergio's ego is a single word from his mom. Jala summons the next best thing to help her win this psychodrama battle. Her mom. Ah, ah, ah. Trouble! No! Jala hits Sergio with a rage taunt, which brings all of Sergio's buried resentments to the surface. Once this weakness is exposed, we hit him with a rage skill. The battle ends not with a defeat, but a reconciliation. They've worked through their issues during the battle and can now start again. I'm sorry I came on so strong, Jala. As friends, or maybe even something more. When Jala needs to clear her head, she heads out to the abandoned theme park just outside of town to go skating. These days it's run by the bear mascot Soundy and his creepy cult of skater punk kids. Our approach to skating is to make it accessible, not too punishing, but also add enough depth for folks that really want to get into it. The basics are to keep the combo meter going up for high score. Extend the combos on rails, wall runs, manuals, quick turns, and end on a combo finisher for a big score. These are just some of the stories and mechanics packed into Thirsty Suitors. We have so much more to share with our players. We can't wait for you to join Jala as she confronts her mistakes, makes up with her exes, reconciles her cultural differences, and becomes the person she was meant to be. Thirsty Suitors is coming to Steam, PlayStation, Switch, and launching into Game Pass. Experience the game for yourself with a Thirsty Suitors Steam demo. Out now. It's hard not to think about how time has changed the memory of you. How it will continue to change, to shift, until I'm left with a version I've created in my head. I'm packing things up, clearing out your stuff, sorting through memories that twist and turn, depending on the way you look at them. It's hard not to drift into the past.
to remember everything all at once. Back when you were still here. Our studio is called Cardboard Computer, and um, it's just it's just three of us. So my name's Jake Elliott. I'm the writer uh, in this studio, I guess, in the team, and, and I also do a lot of programming. Uh, Tomas and I kind of share programming. It's like art, writing, sound. I was playing music and some touring and making records. I guess I caught Jake in his last year. We were at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. All three of us were living in Chicago around 2010, I think. Tomas and I wanted to make a video game, and we had a few other ideas before we settled on Kentucky Ride Zero. We brought Ben on for the second act, I yes. think, and that was in the spring of that same year because we were somehow managed to release the second act in a few months. It would be Friday night, and we'd be like, okay, I bet if we worked all night tonight, I bet we could publish this game tomorrow morning. And we were like, okay. We would work all night, and it wouldn't be quite done. We'd be like, okay, but I bet we could do Sunday. I bet if we kept going, you know? And um, it didn't end up being possible, so <laughs> we had to adjust our expectations a little bit. Seven years, with like another three years before that. Learned a lot about our own processes, and I think that's still kind of carrying over into the new project. Right after Kersey came out, I think we moved directly into this new game. But the idea has been kicking around for years. Maybe as old as Kersey. We're working on a new project. It's the first project we're really seriously focusing on performance as like kind of a core part of the piece. KRZ, it's like very still, there's not a lot of animation. Everything is sort of like these slow idle tableaus. So we're sort of doing a lot of R&D with making it more lively. This is a version of like fully animated characters that we can do as a three-person team, basically. This workflow is already just so exciting. This time we have a lot more knowledge going into it. The beginning of Kentucky Route Zero it was a more staggered sort of development. And now we've known each other for so long and we're so comfortable with each other. And I think that informs making the new work in a way that feels substantial and exciting. The new game, it's, it's about a different tempo. It's faster and, and, and hopefully funnier. And mm, there's comedy in KRZ. But it's a tragedy. But it's a tragedy. It's not a tragic comedy, though. No, no. it's just a tragedy, yeah. Yeah, just a tragedy. <laughs> I thought I was done with this life. But I suppose that's not my privilege to possess. Some skill sets are a curse. Maybe someday I'll find the peace in that. Sadly, today is not that day. different. A Link to the Past was the reason I got into making video games. It was from my dad. He passed away and that was one of the last things that he left. I came back to it when I was in my early teens. It was just a really sentimental 
an emotional experience. And when I beat it, I was like, oh man, I really want to make an experience like this for someone else. So I started to make my own game and I would stream the whole process. And I had a pretty active community on Twitch and Chris was one of the first people. I was thinking, how am I going to make this game alone? Then one day he started typing in my chat. He said, do you have a mic? That's how it all got started. Hey, I'm Chris Hoffman. I'm the programmer at a company that Fabian and I started called Yarn Owl. I work in Austin uh, and Fabian works in Atlanta. We've been working full time on the project together for a little over a year and never met. Hey, hey, how's it going? Alma, this is Fabian. First time I'm meeting Alma. She's yes. very excited and about she's all this. very excited. Like I've talked to Alma as much as I've talked to Chris. <laughs> gotcha. And then, you know, you can hold it again to charge again, and you cool. can hold it again to charge again. Yeah, that's awesome. After work, we both come home and start working on the game. Then, at the end of 2020, I shot him a message one day and I said, Hey, are we really going to make this game? He said, yeah. I quit my job that day. And then in 2021, we started Yarn Owl. I was like, man, he is fully on board. So, from that point, I just figured that he would be the best person to work with. <laughs> He does everything code and I do everything art. We'll just hop in a meeting for like a good hour, but then it ends up being like three hours, four hours, because we get excited just talking about different ideas. It was definitely emotional. Now all of this is happening and all of this is real. If I didn't get a link to the past from my dad or even Wind Waker later from my mom, just getting those games as a kid is what motivates me now uh, to want to make an experience just like that. Hey, it's been a little while, and I just wanted to reassure everyone that, no, you did not collectively hallucinate our announcement of Outer Wilds for the Nintendo Switch. It's possible we were a bit over-optimistic on the time frame. At this point, it's possible we just fundamentally misunderstand the Gregorian calendar, but it's still happening, and we're working hard to bring a great version of Outer Wilds to the Switch. Thank you for your patience. We'll have new info for you as soon as possible. With that said, we also have some good news.
For a long time, I didn't even know that I wanted to make games. And I always loved writing stories in school and learning about the mechanics in video games. At some point, I just thought, okay, maybe I can combine those two things. I'm a computer kid. <laughs> I liked working in these creative programs and, and those were the first steps of kind of like expressing myself. My name is Kai and I'm a writer and one of the co-founders of Third Shift. I'm Fabian, I'm the artist and one of the co-founders of Third Shift. Right now we are in the west of Germany um, in my apartment, which is at the same time the headquarters of our little company. When we started thinking about our project, a little of brainstorming actually on, on this uh, balcony here. And uh, this was when the idea was born. Forever Go is a story-driven road trip adventure game where you play as Alfred, an elderly man who embarks on a journey in his trusty van. The story is inspired by a trip I took down the Pacific coast. Fabian and I were always interested in the diverse landscapes in North America, and that's where a lot of the inspiration came from. When Kai was about to go on this road trip, he asked me to uh, lend him my camera. After he came back, he shared that book with me like as a thank you. And this was actually taken in the middle of nowhere. You can drive for hours on end, and there's just no one and this was just uh, crazy to see. Yeah, we have a scene just like this in the game. Alfred was the first thing we had. Character model of Alfred didn't always look like this. This is what Alfred used to look like. We started redesigning Alfred and making him a little bit more lifelike. Alfred's main purpose is to document this trip. Usually the games that stuck most with us are story-driven games. I'm just excited to see when people actually play this thing in the future. And I hope this will be very soon.
Making games is a process. You try and guide it, but you're trying to guide like a gushing river. Often people reach for stories they've already heard. We really want to pull from our own experience as much as possible because it feels the most kind of real. I'm Laura, uh, I'm the director at Dreamfield. This is the Hellfire Club. Way back when Dreamfield started, this is one of the first places we came for like research. Ireland is full of ruins and those ruins speak to a history of violence sometimes, a history of change as well. Greenfield started as a label for my own work, and then I met Leah. It was just gonna be a few sessions, but it turned into like a full-time week just exploring. We developed loads of ideas, and one of them uh, became If Found. Suddenly there was a dynamic. We're like playing off each other, and then as more and more people come in, it kind of like grows its own identity. I think like creativity is when you bring like one like random idea from here and one random idea from somewhere else and like see how they could join or like what they could do together. And when you have lots of team members, that just happens. It's really important to me that we have the energy and we enjoy it when we come here. So like today, instead of showing computer screens, I wanted to show like dream feel is like all of these people coming together. The new game is set in kind of like a fantasy version of Ireland. Probably the most obvious first detail is that all the characters are cats. I think art-wise, we have something very unique. We have themes that I think are very relevant these days about coming together in the face of adversity. Everything drowned will someday rise from the deep. The eerie message and theme of our game. <laughs> and lots of cute cats. The goal is to be creative together and make something that is worthwhile. Well, I think what's fantastic about Dreamfield is that um, whether you're working on the music or the art or the programming, you're really invited to like bring your best to the table. Everyone kind of leaves a mark on it, which is really nice. In a lot of ways, I think Dreamfield has become more polished as we've gone on. I think this game will feel more polished even compared to If Found, but I hope that we still bring that edge of like exploration and adventure <laughs> into it. Thank you so much for tuning in to our second annual Annapurna Interactive Showcase. We hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you all again next summer.